year run through uh, through regionals and you know uh, like uh, like fleet sized events and uh, just one of the absolute best competitors from North America going up against one of the absolute best competitors from Latin America. Uh, just a great way to start off day one of action here. And of course, you cannot afford you know any missteps in this stage. I know that Diego actually took ninth in Latin American yep. uh, rankings, and you needed to make the top eight in order to get an automatic day two invite. So Diego barely missed that, even though he had an amazing showing in North American Internationals. And it looks like the handshake is underway. We do see the prizes shortly, and it looks like Drew Kennett is going to be the first player starting things off here. Yeah, jumping right into the action here. Looks like Drew is going to be going first. Drew, looking through his deck, of course, the first turn of the game tends to be the uh, the moment where you t take a look at your deck, you take a look at what options you have available to you, and from that point on, you try to uh, get a game plan going for the remainder of the match, depending on what prizes are down on the, um, you know, down in your prizes. Now, of course, Drew is actually playing a deck that came out with this Unified Minds expansion. Drew actually wants to make use of that Mewtwo and Mew GX tag team uh, Pokemon uh, to the most of its potential, adding cards like Welder to... Uh, to add as many energy into play as possible. This is Drew's game plan, and uh, Drew hoping to uh, execute it as fast as possible. Now, of course, Diego on the other side of the field. We see that Pikachu and Zekrom GX. We've seen it in action at North American Internationals. It almost took the championship at North America, taking second place, and here it is again in this brand new world format. Hopefully, uh, at least for Diego, hoping to one-up that second place finish from North American Internationals. Yep, he'd definitely love to see that. He's putting all of his trust in his opening day here into that deck. Uh, we did see Drew open with a pretty interesting deck. He's got a bunch of GX Pokemon in his deck, and he's going to be throwing a lot of those into the discard pile. He wants to make use of his ability of his Mewtwo and Mew tag team Pokemon so that he can copy all of these different attacks and uh, really just pinpoint which one's going to help him the most in this certain matchup here. Now, we saw Drew get a reasonable setup, uh, ending with that Mewtwo and Mew GX as his active Pokemon. Uh, before he pass the turn over to Diego. Now, Diego does have access to plenty of search cards. Actually, matter of fact, one of the key things that I want to stress about this particular matchup is that I think it was expected coming into this weekend for both of these decks to do particularly well because they both have a lot of items that help search their Pokemon out. You know, things like Electromagnetic Radar, Cherish Ball, these items are going to be key for Pokemon to be to start getting set up uh, at a much faster rate than a lot of these other decks that don't have access to these items because of loss, the loss of cards like Ultra Ball uh, from the format. Now, we are going to be seeing Diego start to set up, and because he's got that Pikachu and Zekrom active already, he's hoping to start accelerating some energy onto these Pokemon, and if he can get some sort of like a full blitz going early on, then, uh, then Diego's going to be in really good shape. But at the same time, he has to be wary of all the different attacks that Mewtwo and Mew GX can uh, can use. Once these po once these GX Pokemon are either on your bench or in your discard pile, Mewtwo and Mew G Tag Team GX can use its perfection ability in order to use the attacks as its own. So that's why if you accelerate some energy from like from from a card like Welder, for example, and put it onto this Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team, you're going to have a lot of different attacks available to you. And if you have the right attack for the right circumstance then you can really put uh, Diego on the back foot. So right off the bat, we saw that Dedenne GX was dropped. He used his ability to find himself six fresh cards. Unfortunately, he had to discard two reset stamps with that, and he only plays two. So he will not have any hand manipulation for the rest of this game here. Reset stamp, another key card from this Unified Minds expansion, being able to basically be a one-sided end for those of you who have, who have been playing the game for, uh, for a little while now. Um, shuffling your opponent's hand back into their deck and having them draw cards equal to the number of prizes they have available. When your opponent's down is something like a single prize card, it can be an absolutely devastating maneuver, and having no access to that for the remainder of the game can prove to be uh, dangerous for, uh, for Diego here. And now we see a turn to Welder from Drew as he starts his second turn of the game, having only one fire energy in his hand. Now he plays a rainbow energy, has 120 damage on his Mewtwo and Mew GX, and uh, Great Potion will reduce 50 of that, but still 70 damage on that Mewtwo and Mew tag team um, before it really starts to get going. That That's a dangerous place to be if you're uh, Drew. Yeah, Drew really doesn't want to commit energies to a Pokemon that already has damage on it. Unfortunately, this looks like the only route that he has available to him, so just going to have to commit that Great Potion in there and try to find something to prevent damage from occurring. He wanted Diego to not get an attack off on that opening turn. He was hoping that he wouldn't be able to find uh, the correct cards and able to start do dealing some damage. 
uh, as this Zapdos really does makes the opening turn pretty awkward for Drew here. Uh, looks like Drew does have that Cherish Ball, so he's able to find himself a Dedenne as well, and he can get uh, pretty aggressive. Actually, he's going to discard a lot of Pokemon. That's huge for him. Going to be able to have all of those as potential attacks for his Mewtwo and Mew tag team Pokemon, and was able to find another Mewtwo and Mew tag team as well off of that draw. I didn't get to take a close look at which Pokemon he discarded, but just the fact that he can discard multiple Pokemon on this turn, this is actually a good thing for him, and uh, the Dedenne actually ends up being a useful part of the... Uh, um, that that what's usually you know a, a, a side effect and a bad side effect at that ends up being very useful for Drew as he gets to draw six new cards and add additional t attacks to his discard pile. Now we did see um, Drew pass the turn over to Diego. I'm not exactly sure what he Diego he used did his attack. GX attack and uh, I believe that he used. Uh, Latios's GX attack with clear vision, and uh, that just shuts off both Pokemon players' uh, GX attack for the entire game. So he's going to make both of them play some nice fair Pokemon here. That's actually a very interesting strategy going up against that uh, that Pikachu and Zekrom GXs. We do know that it's got plenty of uh, very powerful GX attacks available to it, things like Tag Bolt GX, and of course, a Lolan Raichu and uh, Raichu itself having another powerful uh, GX attack. Yeah, the, the main thing he wants to avoid is he doesn't want the um, the Pikachu and Zekrom tag team to get that 170 damage snipe onto a Dedenne and end up taking four or five prizes in one turn. That would be such a swing that uh, he's just going to try to avoid that as best as possible. And the easiest way to do that is just get rid of those GX attacks. Absolutely. Now, Diego is um, choosing to kind of spread his energy out onto his field. We see four different energy cards on four different Pokemon here for Diego. And we just see so much damage from the Zapdos onto that tag team uh, Mewtwo, uh, Mewtwo and uh, Mew tag team, and uh, and that's just a lot of pressure being applied to Drew as he only has two energy in play, as opposed to the four on Diego's side. And both of those energies are in play onto a Pokemon that has 150 damage on it. So that's only 120 HP left on that Mewtwo and Mew, and that's just very very dangerous territory of your Drew. I don't exactly know how comfortable he feels. I do know that he's been playing this deck for about two weeks now, and he's felt really confident. As a matter of fact, I met him at the airport when I was on my way here, and uh, and he just he felt so sure uh, of several matchups, including this one, actually. He feels really confident, and I know that one of our co-casters, Jeremy Jallen, was playtesting with Drew, actually, and he also felt like the matchup was really heavily favored for Drew in this particular sense. But Diego seems to have gotten the... Uh, the advantage very very early on here and it's on drew to try to come back but it's a it's just an uphill battle when you have so much damage on your pokemon well it looks like drew is starting to find uh his rhythm here he does have that greninja gx in the discard pile so he's gonna have access to a haze slash if he wants to it's 110 damage and you get to shuffle yourself back into the deck so he can avoid all of that damage um, on his Mewtwo, eventually turning into three prize cards. Instead, he could just throw everything back in and try to set up a Welder onto a new Mew, Mewtwo and Mew later in the game. If he can remove all of the GX Pokemon, or all the non-GX Pokemon from Diego's side, then eventually he can just bring up an Altaria and just set up a Checkmate. And you got it right on the head right there, as Hay Slash is the attack being called from Drew, knocking out that Zapdos, taking the first prize of the game, and shuffling in that Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX, taking away that 150 damage that had been, you know, uh, acquired across the span of two turns here from uh, from Diego. And uh, and Drew now feeling pretty confident as he has no energy in play, but also has no damage in play as well, and is ahead by a single prize card. Diego, on the other hand, now playing a Cynthia and uh, countering Drew Stadium there. Diego has plenty of energy on the field, don't get me wrong, but... Is that going to be enough for him to, uh, to to press the advantage, or is Drew just so confident in his attacks, including something along the lines of like Hay Slash, that he'll just be able to comfortably take these final five prizes? That's really what the story of the game is so far. Right. So, uh, just just to see uh, over on um, on Drew's side, he has a lot of cards in his hand, and we we mentioned this earlier at the start of the game when. The Dedenne hit the, the the bench. He uh, Diego had to discard two of those reset stamps, and this is kind of where we get into the nitty gritty of how does Diego respond in situations like this? Because he would really like some hand disruption along with knockouts. Because right. you just saw your opponent get rid of three energy cards and one of their biggest attackers. If you could manipulate their hand from this stage, you'd be in a fantastic spot. Instead, he just has to go for these knockouts and hope that he can keep up. But 
honestly, a, a welder over from Drew's side in the following turns could be really, really difficult for Diego to combat. Now, Diego, though, can start to apply some pressure while there's no energy on Drew's side of the field, right? If he can start um, being aggressive against some potential attackers from Drew, he can force Drew into some uncomfortable energy attachments, and that could be a way for him to start pulling ahead. But the reality is that Diego's at least a little bit behind at, uh, <laughs> oh, when that it comes to that so damage bad. race. He, he had double custom catcher in his hand, and he just had to discard it because he's like, I, I could hurt a Mew, and Mew to a Mew, or I could just take this knockout, and I honestly think he needs the knockout here. So going to have to get rid of that, and he will not have access uh, to the bench at any point in this game now. You know, I was wondering if he was going to go for the knockout on on uh, on this active Pokemon or if he was going to go for the uh, Mewtwo and Mew uh, attack. I felt like the, the Mewtwo and Mew attack might have been the correct way to go about things, even though obviously your opponent can just find another Mewtwo and Mew and that's, that's some sort of dangerous line of play that you can have there. But at the same time, it was very close and Diego choosing to go after the active Pokemon instead, trying to take some uh, some quick prizes. Yeah, huge miss here from Diego. He really wanted to find an energy switch off of that draw. Unfortunately, he was only able to find tag switch, which isn't going to help him out here. He's going to have to miss the, the knockout on this turn, and now we're just going to see Drew go off. He was able to find that welder. Now three energies out of nowhere, and he has oh, so man. many choices of attacks from this point on. The perfect setup here from Drew as he gets three energy in play out of nowhere, really. He had no energy in play to begin his turn, and that welder just so powerful in this Mewtwo and Mew tag team deck, as now we have access to pretty much every attack on Drew's side of, uh, of the field, including his discard pile, and choosing to deal 120 damage to, to Diego here. Yep, uh, he's using Tag Purge from his Latios GX uh, during his opponent's next turn, prevent all effects uh, done to this Pokemon by Tag Team Pokemon. So it's, it's damage, I believe, and not effects, but yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, prevent all damage, excuse me. Yeah. Now, finally, we see this Pikachu and Zekrom GX have enough energy to start full blitzing. It's been a little bit of time, but Diego now is starting to work on all cylinders here as we find three energy um, for the uh, the bench Pikachu and Zekrom, or actually it's going to be for the bench, the Lolan Raichu and Raichu. Yep. So important clarification there from you, Josue. Of course, you were able to see no damage is going to come down, but does still get to accelerate those energy cards onto his new Alolan Raichu and Raichu tag team Pokemon. Such a powerful attack from, well, Latios', is, Latios is attack from Mewtwo and Mew. And we just see the effect of Drew's deck in action, really. It's, it's so beautiful to watch as there's so many attacks that are just so interesting and, uh, and situational. But if you have enough situational attacks for different situations, then if you can do the right one at the right time and you know your deck very well, then you're going to put yourself in an excellent position to win here as we've seen how these two weeks of just pure playtesting from Drew are starting to pay off as he is pulling ahead in this race. Now, Diego, no slouch himself, has a lot of energy in play. He may not have any prizes taken, and he may not have any damage dealt on this uh, Mewtwo and Mew tag team, but he has energies in play, and that can carry him a long way if he can find a way to really use them. It's all up to the sequence of attacks here from Drew and Diego. A very interesting thing about Diego's list was that he only played a couple of custom catchers, you know? Yeah. He didn't play the full suite of four. So well, uh, getting Drew's list. Well, I, yeah, you're right. Uh, Drew's list is the one that plays a couple of custom catchers. Doesn't run the full suite of four. So if he ever loses one, or if he ever runs out of uh, out of one, then we're not going to see any kind of uh, custom catcher action from either player on this uh, in this game. Yep, we've seen Diego. I believe he already has two or three custom catchers in his discard pile already, and uh, I don't think that we're going to get to see anything else happen other than. Um, uh, Diego going for this paralysis. It's pretty much the only play that he has. He's trying to avoid uh, this this Mewtwo being able to attack for a turn so that he can work through the Latios' attack effect. But uh, he does have that Cobalion available to him, so that's going to remove that effect. Yeah, that Cobalion. Jeez, man. See, see how situational this deck really is? Right. It has so many effects that are just not good enough on their own, particularly for you to stand to make a deck behind. But you add them all up, and then you start to see the power of what this uh, tag team welder deck really, you know, can really bring out. Yep. As we see Diego start to read that Cobalion. Diego's like, wait. <laughs> yeah. He did not expect that. I mean, you you have the power of the rainbow energy, of course, bringing that, uh, that metal energy 
uh, representing that Metal Energy on Me Too and Me Tag Team, and now he will not have any special conditions on him, and that's just incredibly effective against something like a Lowland Raichu there. Yeah, we're, we're almost at checkmate at this point. Drew has set up a pretty perfect setup for himself. Uh, has access to all these attacks, but of course, probably just going to be using uh, that Latios's attack for the remainder of this game. I wonder if he has a Dragonite GX in his discard pile. Yeah, he could potentially set up a pretty big knockout here. He has five energies in play already. If he has that Dragonite GX, he'll be able to use Sky Judgment and knock out that Alolan Raichu. Yeah, he does have it. Wow. That is a huge Sky Judgment as we see a one-hit knockout on this tag team Pokemon. Huge, huge knockout, huge play here from Drew as he gets rid of one of the most threatening Pokemon in Diego's side of the field and takes three prizes for it. Drew now down to two prizes against Diego's still remaining six. Yeah, and he just scoops it up. He knows that there's no answer for him here. He would have needed so many Electro Powers just to get through this one Mewtwo and Mew tag team. No way that he was going to be able to get through a second one, of course, and just going to save himself some time here and move on to uh, game two. Huge Dragonite GX here from Drew. Right place, right time. We see how that stage two GX found its, found its way to be effective despite not actually being in play. That's the power of perfection before uh, Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. It's, it's a pretty amazing ability. And we've seen uh, Mews of the past uh, throughout our card game have some sort of effect like this, being able to copy different attacks or use other effects. And uh, I feel like this is just I mean, the, the name of the ability is perfect. Perfection. Like, <laughs> this is the best it gets. And with all these different abilities that you have, all these different uh, attacks, rather, um, even that, even when we're in this new format uh, where we've seen a, a lot of cards drop out, Drew's found so many different attacks that he can really just work through tons and tons of matchups. And he played that flawlessly, able to set up that Cobalion uh, right when the Raichu was able to get that Paralysis. Diego falls right into the trap, and Drew just smiles and takes a huge Dragonite knockout for game. I mean, you couldn't be you couldn't be more right. Uh, that was really pretty much flawless uh, execution here from Drew, and we were now one game down from our first round here in the World Championships. And uh, this is day one. You know, this is all competitors are just hoping to get to an X2 record. So as long as you only give up two losses or the equivalent of, uh, you're going to be able to make it to day two and start all over again. From a you know from a, from scratch and you'll be at a zero zero record, but still this is a huge way to to kick things off here if you're both Drew and Diego. Neither player wants to take a round one loss. Makes things that much more difficult uh, before you can for, uh, on your path to making day two. And it felt like Diego was you know I don't want to say in the lead, but Diego was definitely feeling a little comfortable at getting a couple of attacks off from a one energy attacker, uh, spreading his energy across the field, and. We saw that uh, that Mewtwo and Mew kind of shrugged it off and found a way to just completely dominate the game despite the fact that it uh, took so much damage early on without really getting ahead on the board. That's just the power of Mewtwo and Mew tag team right there, yep. Kyle. Well, Diego starts us off right with that Cherish Ball. He has that Dedenne, so he's going to be able to get himself a new hand. Uh, we saw in the prize cards that he does have two energy switch. Uh, that he will not have access to until he starts taking some knockouts. A little unfortunate, as that's really how you get that pretty aggressive start. You have to um, shuffle some energies from one Pokemon to the next so that you can start using Full Blitz. Uh, we'll see if he's able to find a different way to do that. Maybe he can find one of the two remaining energy switches uh, from this hand. He does have three Lightning Energy in this opening hand, though, so he could uh, discard a lot of these and set up if he could find his Coco Prism Star he's in an uh, amazing spot he just needs a few Pokemon to get those energies to and we could see Diego have a huge setup well because of Dede change he does get six new cards but I don't uh -oh. see uh, I see a Stadium Nav and I see some uh, so he does have the Stadium Nav which could find him that Thunderbound right but he doesn't have any Pokemon to go with it I don't see a, a radar to go with this either yes yeah, so, so he had just sent uh, Volkner here. He has Volkner for radar, and then he has uh, Pokemon communication. So he could get his okay. Coco Prism out and get that get an energy to his Dedenne and to his uh, Pikachu and Zekrom right. this turn if he so chooses. And it looks like that's the aggressive route that he wants to go with here. Okay, so this is actually ending up to be a pretty solid start here from Diego. Um, we'll have to take a look if he has the Thunder Mountain in his uh, in his deck or if it's in his prizes. Remember, he does have Stadium Nav to potentially find it, as long as he doesn't get unlucky there. 
So uh, depending on the strength of his hand, he could grab a different Pokemon. Uh, but I'm assuming that we will just see any Pokemon that he can use uh, communication on. And uh, that is the play that we're going to see. He's just going to take that Pokemon, shuffle it back in, make sure that he gets that Coco Prism out as soon as possible. And he really just wants to accelerate these energies onto the board. This is a really solid start here from Diego, actually. He's been able to maneuver uh, what looked to be a handful of trainers into a just an overwhelming start for himself. Yeah, it looks he like has those two lightnings in his discard pile, which is just huge for him. He's holding on to a Cynthia as well. He has an energy attachment for next turn. So uh, if we see a Zera Aura along with an energy switch or even in that Thunder Nav or that Stadium Nav into a Thunder Mountain, uh, we're definitely going to see a turn two knockout here with a bunch of energies accelerated. This is going to put uh, our friend Drew on the back foot. He's going to have to find something for himself here, starting off with that giant hearth. Yeah, giant hearth, finding himself a couple of fire energies. Solid stadium answer, or a solid stadium to, to begin your game and your turn with. But uh, but Drew is just looking at a field full of energies already, and his opponent's only taken the first turn of the game yet so far. So we can expect to see just a much different game here from Diego uh, than we saw game one. Even though Zapdos was dealing a lot of damage, it wasn't accelerating his, uh, his field. It wasn't accelerating the energy on Diego's side of the field. So this time around, we're going to be seeing Full Blitz GX and, you know, in action as long as uh, Diego's hand continues to cooperate with him. Now, Drew, on the other hand here, is starting to find his uh, his first Mewtwo and Mew tag team. Drew's hand's he has amazing. A welder, right? He has he has Welder, yeah. he has two fires, and I believe he also has that rainbow energy. Well, there's a rainbow energy. If not, that he he's got that one in his right hand, now. too. Yeah. He's got the retreat available to him. He could just shut off the attacks from tag teams if he wanted to avoid the damage, or he could uh, use that GX attack. Looks like he wants to get that 120 damage into play and avoid the damage from Full Blitz. That's still pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, Diego, Diego is going to be able to accelerate some energies onto the board. Now, Diego having to deal with uh, with that explosive start here from Drew. Remember, that was Drew's first turn of the game, and he has three energy on that Mewtwo and Mew, and he dealt 120 damage. That's a, that's a huge way to kick things off. Absolutely. I mean, really, that's about as good as you can hope for if you're Drew. And uh, he didn't have many attacks to choose from either. Usually, he's used to look through his discard pile, picking one of those 10 attacks that he has available, but now he's just going to copy the bench Latios. So now he does find that Thunder Mountain with that Stadium Nav, and uh, he is going to replace that uh, Giant Hearth and plays a Cynthia to find himself six new cards after attaching that energy onto that Pikachu and uh, Pikachu and Zekrom. But, I mean, what do you do about this, Kyle? <laughs> how do you You're how do you get away damage. from this? <laughs> you have to find your custom catchers, right? Like, that's really the only way to go about it. That's only a temporary answer. Right. You're, you're not dealing with the major threat. Uh, last time we got to see that Zapdos put in a lot of work getting some damage down, and it made Drew have to go with that awkward Greninja attack where he shuffled himself back into his deck and had to uh, find another welder to get going. But I, honestly, this is kind of how the matchup's going to go. Drew has a lot of answers. If he finds those answers, I feel like he answers the question every time. The question becomes, what deck can he not answer? And will he be paired against it multiple times? Because uh, it seems like he's just having a field day with uh, what is likely to be the most popular deck on the in the you know in the tournament today. Yep. His uh, the the one issue with Drew's deck is he plays a lot of weird Pokemon, and starting uh, the the tournament or starting a game can be pretty awkward if you start with a card like Cobalion or something like that, sure. something you don't want to start with. But he's been pretty fortunate to find that um, Mewtwo and Mew tag team pretty often. And that really does come with the consistency of the deck. Like we, like we mentioned, things like Mysterious Treasure, they just, they're so impactful in, um, when it comes to your consistency, right? Like not Absolutely. only do you play Cherish Ball, but you also have other ways to find your Mewtwo and Mew. And it's just, it's a very powerful way to, to go about things. There's a lot of consistency in Drew's deck, despite the fact that it has so many potentially awful uh, uh, starting Pokemon. Now, will Drew continue to press on here it looked oh, like Diego no. had to change his game plan. Really, he he uh, he couldn't become the explosive uh, deck that he wanted to be here, and instead was forced to just pass with 120 damage on his Pokemon. Yeah, it looks like Diego wasn't able to find himself a Zero Aura from that draw, so he wasn't able to find any way to move out from the active spot and start to accelerate energies. Uh, he's just been 
that one card or that one turn short pretty often in the in the first game and now following into the second game here. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we saw Drew, he missed on a Poke Gear where he was not able to find a supporter card, but fortunately for him, he does have access to that Dedene. We see the Cabalian come down as well, so we don't have to worry about that Alolan Raichu sneaking in and uh, removing a lot of effect, um, removing those paralysis effects, and Dedene's gonna draw him six cards. Little Dede change there, finding six new cards here for Drew. Now, the only key difference between this game and the last is that Drew was not able to use uh, that GX attack to shut off Diego's um, GX attacks for the remainder of the game. Now, with that said, I believe that he's dealt enough early damage throughout um, throughout his uh, his turn one attack to be able to potentially make that uh, you know irrelevant. But we're gonna have to wait and see if shutting off, if not shutting off this GX. GX attack is going to potentially uh, be threatening here for Drew as we see a couple of custom catchers in Drew's hand actually but he chooses not to play them knocking out I believe it was uh, Don Wings Necrozma yep he's going to take that knockout and uh, we do see the Mew, Mew, Mewtwo and Mew tag team has four energies attached to it he is setting up for potentially getting a huge Dragonite knockout uh, in the following turns and it looks like Diego was able to find a reset stamp here so Pretty important. Couple of custom catchers. Yeah. This Goes is, for that Cobalion. This is how it starts to happen. He gets to bring Drew down to a lower hand. He's going to bring up that Cobalion. So paralysis uh, could come into effect at some point in time. Okay, so we're seeing the game plan start to uh, start to come down for Diego, right? Like, So if he can knock out the Cobalion, then D uh, Drew ideally won't be able to get it back. If Drew can't get it back, then now Alolan Raichu and Raichu Tag Team will be able to start using its paralysis effects to uh, potentially slow that Mewtwo and Mew down enough so that you can actually uh, knock it out. If you can do so, then all of a sudden you're putting himself in a good spot. This wow. is a much better opportunity than he had a couple of turns ago. Yeah, he was able to find the Electro Power that's gonna give him enough damage to knock out this Cobalion, and he did find the Alolan Raichu uh, and Raichu tag team, so he does have access uh, to getting all those energy cards in play and placing it onto that Pokemon. Uh, it sets him up for that paralysis that he's really going to be banking on to avoid that one turn uh, from the Latios attack in this game. We're seeing the game plan come into fruition here as Diego puts a couple of energy on that Raichu and Alolan Raichu tag team. Because of its tandem sh shock attack, he does threaten to just paralyze the Mewtwo and Mew. And remember, even though you uh, prevent damage, you do not prevent effects. So that's one way for Drew to kind of be caught off guard there and actually have to take some damage from, uh, from Diego's Pokemon. Will that be enough? You know, the story still remains to be, uh, to be told here, but it's a game plan and it's a much better game plan than Diego was able to muster up uh, last time around. Yeah, last time Diego kind of just fell into the hole. He didn't have an, a choice. He had to just bank on that paralysis and hope that the Cobalion wasn't there. This time he knows what he's up against. He was able to remove that Cobalion and uh, he could potentially set himself up in a great spot. That reset stamp did do a lot of damage. It uh, looks like Drew does not have much going on for him. He's holding four energies and a card that gets him three energies. So <laughs> I think we're going to see a lot of theme deck turns from Drew in the next following turns. Well, it's a good thing for him. He's got some really powerful Pokemon in play yep. and in his discard pile. So despite having, you know, what basically what you said is a, uh, you know, a theme deck turn, he's using some big time attacks that we just... Uh, we would love to see in theme decks. In the hey, future, theme decks right? win games, man. <laughs> uh, and that's really what it comes down to. Will Drew's attacks be enough? Even though his hand is definitely not going to be helping him out for the near future, will he be able to have enough firepower out of this Mewtwo and Mew to get himself out of this situation? Diego, on the other hand, already has a game plan, and we know that he's going to try to employ it in the next couple of turns. We can expect to potentially even see Diego use uh, Tandem Shock on, on the following turn. But... Oh, wow, okay, he's going to so be using his uh, Naganadel. He's going to snipe off a Pokemon here and get himself two more prize cards. Naganadel GX uh, has the attack that deals 170 damage to any Pokemon in play. Yep. Uh, and he chose to knock out, I believe, the... Was that Dedene? Yeah, I think I believe that was one of the two Dedenes. So he is set up to potentially snipe the last Dedene and take those last two prize cards. So only two prizes remaining here for Diego. Is this the point in time when you start to use Tandem Shock and just hope that Drew's hand isn't any better? Now, did Drew's hand improve 
from those two prizes he just took. Well, uh, we might be going on a lightning ride. <laughs> and actually, there's a reset stamp in uh, Diego's hand as well. He may choose to just go with that reset stamp. And if he does, will he give Drew a brand new hand? Uh, despite not, I mean, clearly he has no idea that Drew's hand is so bad, right? Right. So in his mind, he's thinking reset stamp is going to be the way to go. And it might actually save Drew in this case. Well, he is going to be able to find himself that Zera Aura, so he does have Free Retreat now available to him. Uh, he could use that Dedenne as well if he wants to start to draw a few more cards. And he does have that, that setup with the Tag Switch, so he's going to be able to move those energies to the active Pokemon. And I, we're definitely going on a Lightning Ride. This is going to be 250 damage. Huge play here. Also has the Reset Stamp as well. So... I think we may have seen Diego honestly have turned this around. Really just depends if Drew's able to find the right cards off of this. But honestly, what are the right cards? He's going to have two cards in his hand and nothing left on his on his uh, board here. <laughs> we are going for a ride, Kyle. <laughs> I did not expect that, actually. That Lightning Ride GX, you know, you forget that he actually can use GX attacks on yeah. this, in this particular game. And that's going to be enough to knock out Drew's... Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX. It's going to allow him to not only take these uh, three prizes, but also leave no energy on the field here for Drew. Drew, we've seen his hand just be awful before. Will did the reset stamp help him, help him out? It looks like it might have. I believe I see a coach trainer. Yeah, he uh, he did not. He found a judge and a welder, but so awkward. He has the energies he could potentially find with the giant hearth, but do you just accelerate two energies onto your Latios at that point and hope that? You can find a rainbow energy off of the welder. I think Diego might have just pulled it off, Kyle. I really, really do. I think that this is just... Well, here's here's the spot. So Diego promoted his Zapdos, and this is one of the few Pokemon that would be able to attack through the Latios' effect uh, at this point. So if the welder is able to find the rainbow energy, he does 120 damage, knocks out this Zapdos, and the only thing that's Doesn't left... Ladio doesn't Latios need like a certain amount of Pokemon in order oh, to be able how to attack? Do, yeah, how does he get that Let many think. Pokemon uh, into play? I think it's four. Need, yes, if you have four fewer Pokemon, you cannot attack. Uh, this would have to be a Welder into a Dedenne into a bunch of Pokemon. Yeah, it looks well, like he's just going to use for one. There's a Mysterious Treasure. He found Mysterious Treasure. I don't think he can attack with the Latios this turn, Kyle. Yeah, no, it, it seems super unlikely from this point forward. He had an opportunity, but his hand is just not cooperating in the way he needed it to. I mean, it needed to be kind of like a sequence of perfect draws in order for that Latios to be able to attack this turn, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. It still does have that Mewtwo and Mew that he can bring up, and this will help him out as, uh, as well as he can. He needs to just find something that can soak up damage. Uh, he has already absorbed the, first, the, the only GX attack of this game. Uh, from Diego's side. So damage output is somewhat limited. You, you're probably not going to be one-shotted at this point. Uh, so he can absorb that. And it really just depends if uh, Drew's going to be able to find the right attacks uh, from this point on. If he can find something to help him out here. But it's going to be very tricky. I believe we're witnessing a master class from a world champion in action right here. As Diego Casiraga seems to be taking us to school here showing us that despite the fact that Drew not only had an explosive, as explosive a start as I think we're going to see this weekend, despite it only being round one, uh, despite all of this, despite the fact that Drew has access to so many things in his uh, deck and discard pile, as we saw in game one, he found a way to out of this, uh, out of this messy situation. And now Diego seems to be one turn away from being able to take this to a game three. Yeah, you have to think that that's it. That tandem shock was huge. It's going to prevent all these uh, attacks from coming into play, even if they were able to happen. Gonna use Custom Catcher for two cards to draw. Jeez, <laughs> Custom Catcher as a single card is just, you know, not exciting in the least bit. Coach Trainer finding four cards as he has his uh, tag team as his active yeah. Pokemon. And that's it, he scoops them up. With only a little under 16 minutes remaining, we're gonna be going to a game three, Kyle. And it looked so unlikely. Uh, if you would have, If you would have asked me, after uh, Drew's turn one, if there, if I thought that there was any chance of us going to a game three, I would have laughed in your face. I would have right. told you that there's a better chance of pigs flying than <laughs> than, uh, than this happening because there's just it seems so unlikely. Three energy in play on your very first turn, and you start to deal 120 damage. 
right. And you're not taking any damage from your opponent's Pokemon. So let's revisit that opening turn then. Do you think that Drew should have just used his GX attack and removed uh, Diego's GX attack from being so, available? You know, hindsight's twenty twenty, so it's easy to say yes, right? Right. But at the same time, remember that he was being threatened from uh, a potential full blitz on turn two. Right. So if he if he takes that hundred that uh, hundred and fifty damage from that full blitz potentially or, or more, obviously, then you know we're going to be seeing uh, an entirely different game. But here's the thing: is that you're you're almost not getting you're almost guaranteed not to be knocked out, right? With the exception of just some incredibly crazy things happening. Yeah, so it, if you don't get knocked out, the damage that you uh, take on your Mewtwo and Mew tag team becomes a little bit more negligible, right? With the exception of you just have to st start fearing things like Zapdos. Yeah, it'd have to be Zapo Zapdos plus Electro Power, or right. the Full Blitz would have to take those energies and uh, attach them to the Zero Aura. So uh, it would have to be Diego m adjusting his game plan at that point, too. And it gets really tricky to, s to see if that was the right play. <laughs> But, I mean... I think the only way that I clear vision on, on turn one is if I have a guaranteed way to get my Greninja into my discard pile and I can use the attack to shuffle my Mewtwo and Mew into my deck on turn two. That way I can get a brand new Mewtwo and Mew on turn three uh, with no damage on it that can start to lock the game out. If right. I can do that at that point, I'll consider using clear vision. But other than that, I mean, really, it felt like Drew played it correctly. It just so happened that, you know, Diego showed us that He's never going to be out of this, out of this game. He's uh, he's too good of a player for him to be locked out by you know by little tricks like that. And you can fool him once, but uh, good luck fooling him twice. Absolutely. Well, let's take a peek over at the prize cards once again. Circuitry. Uh, lose two of those energy switching effects. One of those is the tag switch. The other is energy switch. Potentially he does play more relevant ton. is that one of the custom catchers is prized as well, and he only plays two. Yep. Um, well, that's for Drew's side. That Di Diego wasn't that Drew? Oh, no, that wasn't Drew. You're yeah. right. Yeah. So Diego has multiple. One of these days, I'll get that right. <laughs> 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 All right. The Just an Altaria GX prize here for... Uh, this one was Drew, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got <laughs> this it. This one was Drew, right? <laughs> if, if the Altaria came down on the Pikachu and Zekrom, I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> You never know anymore, man. That's right. This well, brand new format comes with so many surprises. <laughs> We're going to jump into the action. Drew starting us off here. No. And uh, it looks like Diego now finding his... It looks like Diego's going to be going first. Unless... Oh, nope. It is Drew's going first. The camera just tricked me. <laughs> it does a little spin. <laughs> Yeah. That spin, man. I'm going to get used to it, it by the end of the weekend, I promise. It, it took you on a lightning ride, for sure. <laughs> All right. Drew now uh, starting things off for us, as as he should, as he did lose uh, game two and uh, wisely chose to go uh, first on this third game, third and final game. Remember, only a little above 12 minutes remaining before uh, we, uh, we call time here on this first round. And both of these players want to avoid getting a draw as much as possible. Look at this. He's going to go... He's going to start using the uh, the, the Pressure Ram and Charizard tag team. He doesn't have access uh, to his Mewtwo and Mew, so he's going to just set up like one of those uh, those Greens Pressure Ram decks that we keep seeing. He's just going to go for uh, maybe a, a Double Blaze or a Flare Strike in these opening turns. Drew showing how different his deck can be, how special and unique <laughs> the deck can be as it can attack you from all angles, including from one of the more popular angles we're going to be seeing throughout the weekend as I guarantee you that this is not going to be the last time we're going to be rush, uh, we're going to be seeing Reshram and Charizard Tag Team GX on the field uh, in the, uh, over this weekend, as it is expected to be one of the most popular decks in the format. Obviously, in this particular case, it's just kind of like a support attacker. Right. Um, rarely seeing play, but in this particular case, if you can't find a Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team, you want to put the pressure on, so why not just do it with Old Faithful itself, Reshram and Charizard Tag Team. Diego now starting his own first turn of the game as Drew had an unexciting turn, if uh, uh, to say the least here. And now Diego hoping to kind of one-up things here as he just wants to get as many energy in play again as possible, uh, wants to threaten Drew and put a lot of pressure and not give him the ability to just kind of bounce out of this uh, potentially poor turn and poor start from Drew. This is such a safe route from Diego. He took a Dedenne and shuffled it back into the deck, grabbed a Pokemon, just attached and used Cynthia. So 
if he's able to find a Dedenne off of this or some way to find it, uh, he as he does find it there, uh, it does have a huge payout for him. It looks like he's able to counter the stadium as well. That's going to be amazing. Uh, just removing uh, that draw three effect from Drew's side of the field. And he could get aggressive here. It looks like that's going to be the plan. Yeah, countering with Lysander Labs and then playing Dedenne, discarding one of the lightning energies to draw himself six new cards. Is also able to get himself a lightning energy into the discard pile. And it looks like he found electromagnetic radar. So he could discard more lightning energies if he wanted to. Maybe find himself a Zero Aura and a Dedenne. But it's going to hold off on that for just one more turn, being that he doesn't have an attack set up just yet. So smart. So, uh, I guess. It's tamed. Yeah, it's, it, it, exactly. It, like, a lot of players would consider the option of electromagnetic radar and just kind of spin the wheel, you know, right. see where it lands. But instead, he sees, all right, cool, I have a, I have a nice setup for my following turn. I should be able to uh, to counter whatever he does, and uh, let's just see what Drew can muster up, and then let's play accordingly. Right, and if Diego ends up top-decking one of the pieces that he would have grabbed with electromagnetic radar, that opens up other options for him. He could grab a different Pokemon as well, and uh, he could find himself in an even better spot. So sometimes having the cards and not playing them can be the best play. We're seeing two veterans of the game, two players who have been playing this game for many, many years, just duking it out here in the first round of this World Championships. And I would expect nothing less than top tier gameplay from both. And that's exactly what we're getting. We're seeing just world class gameplay from two competitors who I would not be surprised to see, you know, in, uh, you know, vying for, you know, top eight and for, for Championship Sunday birth. Oh, yeah. And both of these players just, you know, want to start things off on the right foot. They do not want to get an early loss and, or an early draw, really. I think a, a draw is almost as bad as a loss here. About as close as you can get, of course. Uh, and both of these players hoping to not have that happen to them. But they're playing against world-class competition, you know. Despite it being the world championships, in some particular, you know, against a, a reasonable percentage of the field, these players are so elite that they can consider themselves, you know, to be the better player, that they consider themselves to have a, a pretty big edge when it comes to, to to a skill gap. But in this case, both of these players just pretty evenly matched, and we're going to be seeing a flare strike actually here wow. from Drew on the second turn. So despite not having the ideal Pokemon, he still has an incredibly powerful attacker on his second turn and just knocks out this Tapu Koko before it can use its... Uh, its ability and start to uh, accelerate Diego's energy. So that is one major weakness from Diego's strategy. And um, I I just have to assume that Diego had no way to get it under his bench. Yeah, it was not going to happen just the way that his deck's built. It's a little more difficult to move around if you aren't in the second or third turn because, because you need energies and zero aura to start switching around. It's not using that Jirachi engine that uses the skateboards and whatnot. So Moving around is pretty difficult for him. And uh, yeah, we will not be seeing any dancing with the Ancients uh, from uh, Mr. Coco. This time around, uh, Diego's going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. He's going to need to find himself a Thunder Mountain if right. he wants to get an attack off that's relevant this turn. He can still get off a, a full blitz on this turn, and it can still be incredibly powerful. But it's going to require a Thunder Mountain here. And if he doesn't find that Thunder Mountain, then we're just going to see a very, very one-sided game here out of Drew. He had to do it again. All right, here we go. Dead A change. He Does he find it? Does he find a Thunder Mountain? Whoa. I think he did. Yeah, all right. All right, there is a Thunder Mountain right in his hand. This is huge for Diego, wow. as if he would not find it or a way to find it, then he would have been in just incredibly awful shape, and it might have actually spelled the end for his, uh, for his match here. But right away, we saw that card in the window of his hand, one of the first cards we got to see out of Diego's hand, and that puts us right back into this game for both players. Cherish Ball now finding Diego any type of uh, uh, GX Pokemon, and looks like he's going for that Ultra Necrozma here. And, uh, or I'm sorry, Dawn Wings uh, Necrozma, Necrozma yep. yes. And um, we're going to be seeing a lot of Necrozmas throughout the weekend, by the way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, it's going to be very easy to, uh, to, to mess those up. But yeah, we're going to be seeing that Necrozma come down, and. and really? um, Wow. Okay, so Lily as well now. Four more cards here for, for Diego. Does yeah. he have anything outside of just a full blitz here? Doesn't seem like it. So now full blitz, finding three energies, and now we're going to have five energy in play here for Diego as Drew Kennett has a lot of damage on this uh, Rashram and Charizard, but it's already starting to pay its dividends. He's 
down to five prizes opposed to Diego's six, and he's going to be able to deal a whole lot of damage to this uh, Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Yep. So Diego ha did have a pretty fair amount of outs uh, off of that Dedenne. Uh, he could have potentially found a Volkner to find himself that Thunder Mountain or a Stadium Nav, but he was able to find the raw Thunder Mountain, which was able to get him all these energies into play. Unfortunately, in doing so, using that Dedenne, he had to remove two reset stamps again, and we saw just how crucial that was in game right. two. Not going to have access to that for the remainder of this game. Although we do only have five minutes plus three turns, so we'll see uh, just how long a game we have left, honestly. Yeah, with uh, us being now down down to five minutes remaining on the clock, it's going to be a little bit difficult for these guys to finish the game on time, but because there's so many uh, tag team Pokemon in play for both sides of the field, anything can happen, and we can still realistically see this match end with, uh, with there being a clear victor. However, time is running short, and it's of the essence here, so every turn is going to be very pivotal, and both of these players do not want to give anything away. Now, with that said, Rashram and Charizard still has to find a way to be able to attack this turn if it wants to stay relevant. And I'm not sure if I like uh, Drew's hand enough. There's a welder in it and an energy and a great potion, but beyond that, he's going to need some help here. He finds a couple of mysterious treasures. Yeah, those aren't going to really yeah. move him forward. He would have loved... Oh, there was two great potions, though. That might change things up a little bit. However, is that, I mean, is he just gonna deal 200 damage this turn and? Yeah, we'll see what he goes with. He, he's not gonna have access to Flare Strike. Right, with no access to Flare Strike, will he just use his GX attack to put some damage onto Pikachu and Zekrom and not get a knockout? All right, yeah, he's just gonna go with his Outrage and set up a little bit of chip damage on that Pikachu and Zekrom. Imagine if he had access to double Custom Catcher. Do you think he may have just not used his great potions and taken a huge knockout on like a card like Zeraora or Dedenne from that point? It's it's pretty tricky to, to move around in a stage like this, but it looks like he found a pretty good spot for him. Does have a lot of hit points to work with, and it's pretty awkward for Diego to get through this Restoram and Charizard right now. He's gonna have to find the right amount of cards or use a lot of resources uh, and his GX attack to counter this. I'm not going to lie to you, Kyle. There's a lot of options that he has available to him, and I don't know how much I like any of them, you know? Like, I, it's just an awkward spot to be in. To, for you to use both of your great potions, that means you're not going to have them available to you for the remainder of the game. But with that said, you know, there's only a couple of turns left in the game anyways, right? Right. Um, not being able to maximize your damage output here with, uh, with Reshram and Charizard and having your opponent potentially have some sort of a game-breaking play, like maybe a um, uh, a paralysis uh, attack here from that. Well, how do we feel about lightning ride? Maybe uh, he could Oof. he could set up and take a huge knockout here, but uh, wouldn't have access to a one-hit knockout on a Mew uh, Mewtwo and Mew tag team later in the game. Uh, he could definitely set that up for himself here. I don't know. Looks like he could also use his. Uh, his Pikachu and Zekrom's GX attack here now and take the knockout as well, and that's gonna be the play here. So here's the thing, is Diego's now down to three prizes, right? And I think Drew knew that this was gonna happen, of course. So how do you how do you get out of that with your current board state? Like, you just don't have the resources available to you anymore. You've lost so many energies, you've, you've dedicated so many resources to this Reshiram and Charizard, and now you're forced to just kind of use Mysterious Treasure a couple of times. Time is running out on the clock, and that could prove to be pivotal here as Diego might not be able to take the final three prizes but it's just I don't know if this game plan is going to lead to a victory for Drew I just don't think it will yeah Drew needed desperately to find himself a reasonable supporter or a Dedenne this turn and unfortunately he just sees that he has the multiple mysterious treasures available to him he can use those to thin his deck down as best as possible and maybe find himself uh, a relevant supporter card here in the following turn it really just depends on how he wants to go about this he could uh, use one of his tag team Pokemon to soak up damage, but the best play is honestly probably to let a GX Pokemon get knocked out and make your opponent play an eight prize game. Now, there being a little over a minute left on the clock, I think both of these players know that time is running low and uh, every play is going to matter so much more. Diego seems to be the only player that's in a position to win the game and uh, in that case, the match. I love the way that Drew's playing this out. That he's he's making sure that he has the best odds possible to rip a supporter off the top of his deck. And uh, that's really all you can ask for at this point. He's going to leave the, the Latios uh, available 
uh, for a knockout if uh, Diego is able to find himself an Electro Power. And it really just depends if he has the cards right now to cl start closing this out. If he can take knockouts, uh, especially this turn, he probably can do this in a, the right amount of time to save himself. 30 seconds remaining on the clock. Whoa, whoa, Diego. whoa. He has double custom catcher. Diego has double custom catcher in his I hand? Yeah. See, he does have double so custom catcher in his hand. If he but he only plays Cynthia, though. He had the, the potential out to bring up the, Mute, the Mewtwo and Mew and uh, use a, the Tandem Shock on it and paralyze it and leave it available for a knockout. He chose not to go that route despite... You know your Bruce opponent just only, has a Mewtwo yeah, in hand. Yeah, despite knowing your opponent only has a Mewtwo in hand. Is there a more reasonable route here? I, I don't know, Kyle. Uh, I know that time's just been called, though. Maybe the time pressure got to him. Maybe the, you know, the fact that he knew that he only had, say, something along the lines. I mean, in his mind, he, he thought he probably had like a minute left or something. So he does find the Electro Power. He has access to a knockout here. But if Mewtwo and Mew is promoted and he has no way to knock this out, he'd have to find Double Custom Catcher again to win the game. All right. He does get the knockout here. Uh, on turn zero, basically. So Drew will be turn one. And uh, Diego is down to a single prize. Remember, Drew, uh, Drew forcing Diego to play an eight prize game here, in a sense. Unless he can find double custom catcher, in which case he will be able to uh, see one custom catcher in Diego's hand. If Diego can find double custom catcher, then we will see the game go to Diego. But with only one. Oh, no, I think it, we, well, he's got that Volkner, so he would be able to find the custom catcher. Does he have the Electro Power as well to, to go with it? Because I believe he's going to be just short of a knockout, unless the Jirachi has enough hit points for him to take that. We're, we're getting real close <laughs> uh, at this stage here. Is going to use his Sogaleo's attack and just accelerate some energies onto the board. Pretty irrelevant from where we're at at this point, All but right. you got to keep fighting it out. Is this the final opportunity? We see a Volkner. Is this the final opportunity for Diego to close it out? We see the Custom Catcher. That's a second Custom Catcher. Custom Catcher's up to Jirachi, and that is the handshake. Drew Kennett extends the hand. Diego Casiraga is going to be your victor here as he does take this game on the final possible wow. turn. Time had been called. He was down to his final turn remaining. He had that Volkner. He had the double custom catcher. And that was all she wrote right there. We have a clear winner as Drew is forced to extend the hand. And Diego Casiraga starts things off with a 1-0 and zero record coming into day one here at the World Championships. As close as it can possibly get, Kyle, and that's an ex uh, as exciting a way as we can ever start off a World Championship. Yeah, that was incredible. The Jirachi did have 160 hits.